Now this pasta dish is one of my all-time favorites. I learned about Botarga, which is the main flavor ingredient of this pasta, when I was visiting the beautiful island of Sardinia. I had never been there before and I had never tasted Botarga, which is in the Mediterranean, uh, known as the Mediterranean caviar. And it's the row of either uh, the gray mullet or the tuna fish, which is found in the Mediterranean. It's salted, pressed, and air dried, and it adds a very unique flavor to the pasta. So I am uh, browning the uh, garlic in olive oil, and we have some white bread in our food processor, and I'm just pulsing the bread until it forms a uh, rough breadcrumb. And I toast this, about a cup of it, in with the garlic. Just about that much. And now gently brown the breadcrumbs. That takes about five minutes. The pasta, the bucatini, which is a long um, tubular pasta with a hole down the middle, cooks for about six minutes in the boiling water and then the rest of the time in the sauce itself, which I'm gonna make right now. So the breadcrumbs are a golden brown and I'm removing those to a tray. They're crispy, they'll even get a little crispier drying out of the oil. And now we're gonna make the rest of the sauce right here in the high-sided skillet. And we have to heat now a quarter of a cup of olive oil and four cloves of garlic crushed. Just leave the pieces nice and big because you can pick those out later on. So we'll just crush these like that. And they can go right into the... Oh, the pasta has cooked now for six minutes. I'm going to drain that into a colander. Good facial, steamed facial. And just let that sit right here. Okay, so the garlic's in. We're going to add a quarter of a cup of capers. Stand back because the capers, even though they've been drained of their liquid, do tend to pop open. And they turn into little flowers when they, when they do pop open. It's a pretty sight. And a quarter of a cup of golden raisins, slightly chopped. So already it's an unusual combination of ingredients. This would be something that you would find in uh, Sardinia or even in the islands off the coast of Sicily. And we have preserved lemons. These you can buy or you can make, but uh, we want just the peel cut into small dice. What these are are really lemons that have been sitting in kosher salt for about three weeks. It is a North African, Moroccan kind of condiment and extremely flavorful. So add your preserved lemon and four cups of chicken stock. Bring that to a simmer. Already a different sauce, wouldn't you say? You need a tablespoon of lemon juice. Well, that's basically about a half of a lemon. And six tablespoons of unsalted butter. One stick of butter is eight tablespoons and six is three quarters of a stick of butter. Makes cooking very much easier when you know the proportions. So let this cook together until the butter melts. And another exotic ingredient is this reddish Aleppo pepper. This comes from Turkey or from Syria. Aleppo is actually a city in Syria. One teaspoon has a very nice taste for this particular pasta. Now when this comes to a simmer, add your pasta. And the pasta cooks yet another, oh, three or four minutes. And while this is simmering, and don't forget to stir, you can prepare the rest of the ingredients. Uh, al dente, by the way, is the most desired doneness. The pasta is cooked until it can be bitten easily, but still offers that little sense of texture. That's the term al dente, to the tooth. Uh, and we have our botarga. This is tuna botarga, and you buy it by the ounce. It is the most unusual flavor. Salty, pungent, really, really amazing. It's a little hard to find, 
You can probably get it online, but um, that's the Botarga. And uh, I want to also make some strips of Parmesan cheese. All of this is going to go onto our pasta. If you use a vegetable peeler like this, you can make yourself quite a little pile of these pretty curls. Let's check on our pasta. Add half a cup of Parmesan cheese. This does help thicken up the liquid. And then add your quarter of a cup of toasted pine nuts and your lovely chopped parsley. Flat leaf parsley is good. And now I'm gonna add most of the Bartarga. I've reserved some for the top. Mm, so utterly beautiful. So the way I like to serve it is in a shallow dish like this. Take a big swirl of it. Try to get all of the ingredients. A sprinkling of the breadcrumbs. And I don't know if you've ever had a pasta that you just can't stop eating. This is one of them. And some shavings of the Parmesan cheese on top. And a little bit more of the Botarga. And here you have a very unusual, flavorful, unique, delicious pasta, one that you will remember forever. Bucatini with Botarga.